Medicare Advantage plan in 2011 will be frozen. Uh, and as you, as you know, uh, Medicare Advantage now uh, has roughly 20% of the seniors are involved in it. And it's a plan that replaces Medicare uh, with a, an individual coverage from a commercial insurance company or an HMO. Uh, these plans, uh, we pay, the government pays, the taxpayer pays, uh, between uh, 15 and 20 percent more for the care than we do for the actual people who are in the original Medicare. So this is the addressing of that issue and the uh, removal of that over time beginning in 2011. And another big uh, op option here uh, for... Um, for individuals, uh, in my opinion, is the flexible spending account changes. Um, flexible spending accounts, as you know, allow people to, on a pre-tax basis, make deposits that they can then use to reimburse themselves for unreimbursed medical expenses. So this is a plan that you would usually have through an employer. Yes. We used to call them, I think, cafeteria plans uh, because you would usually have choices, but uh, some of them, it's really just one choice, which is the medical and anyway, so you're able on a pre-tax basis to put some money aside that you expect to be using during the year uh, to pay some anticipated expenses, maybe for a big dental job or, uh, or an operation or something that you expect to be coming up. Right, and you, you remember the old, uh, the old adage, use it or lose it. Right. And uh, flexible spending account plan plans have been notorious for that. They took planning and you needed to keep meticulous records. Otherwise, you could possibly lose the money that you had deposited to the plan. Right. Now, the HSA plan kind of came along and, and resolved that in the fact that anything left in the HSA plan at the end of the year, you can roll that over uh, to the next year. Uh, in any event, both these plans had a penalty for early withdrawal that was not used for medical expenses. If you use it for going out to dinner or mm -hmm. going on vacation or something like that, that's right. uh, not, not allowed. Uh, anyway, in, in the past, it's been 10%. That's going to be changed to 20% now. And the other thing, which I think today is a, a big, a big uh, uh, factor, is that now, moving forward, uh, over-the-counter uh, medicines, vitamins, those kinds of things, are no longer going to be eligible for reimbursement uh, through these plans. And as you know, Mike, we have probably 38 million Americans involved in... Uh, uh, integrative or alternative type medicine, uh, medical care. And I think this is going to have uh, a big effect on those, on those particular so people. So one thing that we're talking about, though, is that, uh, that some of the medications that are like over-the-counter, again, um, for example, right now those are covered in your uh, flexible spending accounts, your cafeteria plan type of things. Uh, this is actually kind of a recent development. And as part of uh, the funding or trying to keep the cost control on this thing, uh, basically they decided to exclude those now from coverage. Now, was that started in 2013? That was going to start in 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay, so next yeah. year. 2011. So if, okay. you, if you need to do it, go get it done now. Better go get your medicine <laughs> Get now. it done now. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, but then you were talking about the alternative care. So, for example, my wife uh, uh, goes to an acupuncturist and she gets... Uh, uh, herbal medicines, and so although I mean some of those I guess that they're they're licensed they can prescribe, and so I well this definitely. is one of those things in the bill that that you pointed out earlier yeah. that we're not exactly sure yeah. how that's going to work out. Yeah. A, <clears throat> a representative from uh, the insurance company, <clears throat> one of the insurance companies, told me uh, you just get a prescription for it and then yeah. you're fine. Yes. So if that's possible, yeah. uh, that's great. I hope the prescription doesn't come along with the the hyper cost of prescription drugs these days right, uh, right. either. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move along. Well, 2013, uh, for our high-income folks, comes in the uh, tax on high-income earners. And this is a tax that's, uh, that's levied for individuals that make in excess of $200,000 a year uh, and for a joint return that makes uh, $250,000 a year. And what it's doing is adding an additional 3.8% tax on unearned income. So as you know, that would be dividends, interest, rents, uh, royalties, <coughs> annuity payments, those kinds of things. Uh, one important uh, note is that qualified plan distributions, so from your 401k or your pension plan at work, 
are not included uh, in this. So, um, so that's going to uh, going to affect. But, but on the flip side of that, your non-qualified plans, it, there's, there's some uncertainty, where a lot of people believe that they will be covered. Uh, yeah, so. and that's that's a good question. I the material that I researched for our visit, uh, I didn't see anything mentioned in there about non-qualified yeah. plans. Ev evidently, evidently, it's controversial. So yeah, well, <laughs> so there's, there's sort of a question mark there that that has to be resolved, folks. So. You know, uh, stand by and, and keep your eyes open for, for developments here. There you go. Uh, and again, uh, another, uh, another hit on FSA plans, flexible spending account plans, they will be limited moving forward to a $2,500 annual contribution. So in the past, there was no limitation on these. Actually, the employer set the limitation on it mm -hmm. uh, based on the plans that they, partic that they had particularly. Uh, so in 2014, Mike is is when the major portion uh, of the bill of the act, I, sh I should say, mm -hmm. uh, becomes effective. And uh, in 2014, we see insurance reform uh, prohibiting all pre-existing conditions. Now, uh, this year we're seeing a pro prohibition for children. Right. Uh, now that's going to be uh, prohibited for everyone. And also, there will be no annual limits or any restricted annual limits that were actually allowed uh, in the earlier uh, piece of that. The employers will face a mandate. Uh, if they don't offer coverage, there'll be a penalty for that. Uh, and also, a penalty for not offering coverage that is deemed to be affordable. And the definition of affordable coverage is that the premium that the employee has to pay is greater than 9.5% of their family income, or the employer pays less than 60% uh, of the premium. So uh, this is going to, uh, going to have some employers thinking about and rethinking, and they already are, what is it I'm going to do uh, moving forward? Yeah, no, but uh, again, folks, also, Don, I want to remind you, so we're going to have a separate interview related to how this affects employers. <laughs> So there's just not time for us to get into a lot of depth about that at this time. And so, um, anyway, so stand by and watch for our other uh, interview. That's it. Um, also, as, uh, uh, in 2014, we, uh, we're, we see that the employer is going to be required to offer a free choice voucher uh, if they offer uh, coverage. And that is the employee's income is be below 400% of the federal poverty level. And for a single person, that would be uh, a little over 43000 And for a uh, family, that would be 88200 uh, So uh, the premium, and if the premium share that the person pays is between 8 and 9.8% and and excuse me, of their income, uh, the voucher would be, uh, would be uh, required. And the amount of the voucher is the amount that the employer would have paid under the highest option that the employee is eligible for. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an interesting aside to this, uh, and that is that if the voucher is presented and the employee goes to the, to the, uh, the, uh, the pool mm -hmm. and purchases a policy that costs less mm -hmm. than the voucher, mm -hmm. the employee can keep the rest of the money oh, okay. and take it in his income. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I see that, uh, you know, this may, may or may not have been thought out yeah. well or correctly, but that's, uh, that's where we are okay. uh, right at this point. And some of these things may be adjusted at some later date. We'll see. Of course, then we'll have another battle. So anyway, um, just to let you know where we are, Don, we have probably about eight minutes left, I'm guessing. So I think probably we're going to need to, to move along, but we do have a lot of these employer requirements that are going to come into effect. We'll discuss in more detail uh, in another interview. And, but I guess one other thing, let's, let's, let's talk about the penalties at least. For uh, let's talk about the individual mandate. That, that's okay. probably the, the most, okay. and that's actually the, the next okay. thing on my so list. Okay, so which mandates then in require individuals to take action was our next question. Yeah.